The Godzilla vs. Kong recent set photos that were leaked to the public that we covered in a recent video got Al and I thinking. The crash landing that the photos show has a very similar looking feel to the MonsterVerse Skull Island The Birth of Kong comic series that was released in 2017. If you haven't checked the series out yet, we highly recommend it. Even if it's just for the fantastic visuals that you're going to see with this series. But there is one event in particular that takes place within the comic series that needs to be told. The heartbreaking story of Kong's parents. It all begins when a monarch team of operatives finds themselves stuck on Skull Island with no help. Outside of the assistance of the island's local population, the Iwi. I won't get too specific on the entirety of this story for spoiler reasons, but feel free and let me know if you'd like to see a series of videos covering the comic series for Skull Island. What we will be discussing is how this character right here, named Rikio, was able to see back into the past of Skull Island. It all started when Rikio, injured from the team's rough initial hours of being stranded and lost, was given strange iwi healing medicine to drink, which he soon developed what seemed to be an addiction to the strange concoction. This all accumulated when the team entered one of the native temples that are scattered throughout the ancient island. Here Rikio started to experience radical changes within his mind. It was almost like he was given a vision to the island's ancient past. Not thousands, but millions of years before they ever set foot on the island. What he saw was a great battle of beasts. No, titans. Kong wasn't always alone. There was an entire tribe, a family. This place was home to Kong's entire species. It was their paradise until the skull crawlers came. They laid waste to everything. <laughs> Soon it all ends, and some time passes before the next vision into the past would occur. When it did, it was when the group stumbled upon an old shipwreck that must have been there for hundreds of years by the look of it. Inside lay another one of the island's mysterious ritual paintings. By the time the Iwi arrived in Skull Island, the crawlers had slaughtered all of the Kongs. All but two of them. The strongest. Kong's parents were king and queen of Skull Island and they fought to the very end. All the other members of Kong's family lay dead, killed by the overwhelming onslaught of skull crawlers. Fast forward to the third issue of the series, and the crew manages to discover the same boneyard that we see in the Skull Island film. Laying in the middle of the boneyard was the remains of two gigantic ape-like creatures, all that remained of Kong's parents. Before the group could really comprehend what they were seeing, skull crawlers attacked the group and forced the outmatched humans into a nearby small hole. What they didn't know is that this hole led to what was once the den of Kong and his family, the location that was going to be his nursery, his home. This sends Rikio on yet another trip into the past, and this time we get to see the great end of Kong's parents. I can see the birth of Kong, this place, the boneyard. It was the home of the Kong super species, the last place to fall to the skull crawlers. And the two apes the Iwi saw on their arrival, the lone survivors, Kong's father and his extremely pregnant mother. By the time Kong was conceived, things were long past hopeless. But still, his mother and father fought, and they fought right up until the birth of their one and only child. Kong was born in battle, blood, Thunder, fire, and death. Kong's first images, his first impressions of this world. He only knew his mother for an instant, one instant in her arms, all he had for the rest of his life. His mother, she knew what to do, while his father held off the crawlers. She sealed him up here, in this cave, where they couldn't get to him. And then the baby Kong watched, watched as the crawlers slaughtered his mother. <laughs> Hatred, the rage, the fury kindled inside him that day is the source of his strength. It makes him invincible. What could Kong do after all, when it was all over? He was the last of his kind. What could he do but weep by his dead mother and father? And so he did. He wept. 
although there was no one there to hear him. If you thought Bruce Wayne's murder of his parents right in front of him was bad, seeing how Kong's parents gave it all they could while his mother was delivering him into this world, and for them to die as soon as he was born, well, that kind of takes the cake in my opinion. This whole story may make you look differently at the MonsterVerse Kong. Imagine how he must feel as a sentient being, capable of understanding that he is the last of his kind, remembering how the very first thing he saw in life was his parents being slaughtered. The vengeful protagonist vowing to take revenge for their parents' death is not a very original idea, but seeing it done by what is pretty much just giant animals somehow makes it a bit more unique. Maybe now you will respect Kong a little bit more, and see how he just may grow to be a true test to this version of Godzilla. Fueled by sorrow and rage, with the memory of his entire race guiding him in every one of his battles, making him truly almost invincible, something he will need when fighting a god. Hey residents, if you liked today's video and want to hear more about MonsterVerse lore, make sure to let us know and share this video with a bunch of your friends.